Good evening and welcome to the workshop. In this video, I'm going to finish off the equaliser bars and the axle boxes for the Atlantic's front bogey. What you can see here are the two castings. This is the equaliser bar and then here are the, the four axle boxes. And these sit outside of the frames, so the, uh, the, bogey, the bogey frames sit on the, on the inside. Uh, and there is a plate across here and there are springs which sit between the plate and these holes here in the equaliser bar and that allows irregularities in the track to be taken up by this assembly. Um, <clears throat> I uh, drilled and reamed these axle boxes 5 16 of an inch which is how big they are and um, I'm a little bit upset because I actually had these, um, if I get them back to back, I had them pretty, uh, pretty well uh, aligned in terms of dimensions and so on. Uh, and then I made the first mistake was I didn't didn't pay too much attention here and I let the drill wander. Um, I did uh, spot drill it, but not deep enough. And uh, it's slightly out. I don't think that's going to be a major issue, but that's quite annoying. Uh, and in getting all these parts to be uh, equal here, the angles and so on. Um, I hadn't, I just used the external faces as a datum. Uh, I didn't actually check where the uh, marks were for the axles. So <laughs> actually, they're, uh, the whole thing is offset at an angle like that, like another one of these parallelograms. Thankfully, you're never going to see both of these at the same time. They are uh, on opposite sides of the bogey. What I could do is... Um, clamp them together like this and then go over with a file again uh, to bring them down to back to being uh, exact copies of each other. But I think for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. In machining these components, I, I learned a huge amount. And I, if you want to hear about that, please continue listening. Otherwise, thanks very much and I'll see you next time. I've learned that I can change over from mill to drill in just under 10 minutes, um, which is pretty handy. I... These are the equalizer bars and axle boxes for the Atlantic. They are now machined, at least, um, to their final dimensions. I need to do a little bit more drilling, so I'll do that next. Now, I won't bother showing that because it's just holding it in a vise, just drilling vertically down. Um, and then I will tidy these up with a bit of emery paper because there's still quite a lot of file marks on there. Uh, and actually, that's that's quite interesting. I, I ended up using this uh, Viob second cut file, especially on the axle box faces. Um, I was just having trouble getting it all perfectly square. And I realized I've never trammed in the, the Centec at all after buying it. I just put it together and started using it. So I don't know if the, uh, the head is on perfectly vertically or there's, an, there's any nod in it or any tilt. So uh, I'm going to do that next, actually, before I machine anything more complex, like the bogey stretcher casting. Um, that said, I found it very enjoyable to file this by hand. Very addictive. Um, just checking in a couple of hours at a time, and I got these nice and flat and parallel with each other, these axle box faces. So I'm really pleased. And you can see the profile I'm going for here with the axle boxes approximately a quarter of an inch with a dip next to them, then a slope up to a 5 16 wide central area here. So that's where I am so far. Hopefully the next time you see these, they'll be all gleaming and shiny and uh, the holes will be drilled and everything will be wonderful. So I'll catch you then. I am coming to find many problems with this vice and I'm sure it's all me, but one of the things that is really getting my goat at the moment is that the support bar in the middle is only a couple of inches wide. And so these parallels rock really easily because they've got such a small surface area to bear on. Um, I really didn't want to go out and buy a new vise. Um, you know what I'm like for vintage tools. Um, vintage vice, vintage vices of this design, this is Abwood, uh, made locally, well, made in London back in the day. Um, you know, it's got a relatively limited uh, gripping width. It's only two and, two and a bit inches. Um, which is not great by comparison the same size vice from uh, that's as far as it goes the same size vice from uh, RDG or Arc Euro Trade will have a six inch gripping distance for the same size vice 
Um, I'm not re really not too sure what to do with that, but I have ordered some taller parallels because uh, another annoying thing is that these this is the tallest parallel I have. So having to stick tall steel on top of these parallels adds another um, cumulative error, which is uh, which is pretty frustrating. The gunmetal castings uh, were grabbing so much with these drills, uh, and it's because of the rake angle, as far as I'm aware. So uh, before I start machining the axle boxes for the tender, I got to learn how to regrind drill bits because uh, it was pretty scary seeing those uh, actual castings go spinning around on the uh, on the drill. This is one of the locks on the carriage for the. The table for the mill which uh, I only discovered recently so that's going to help me when I'm machining that bogey stretcher to have nice straight cuts. I am now going to take full opportunity of this cheap magnifying glass. I made that mistake in drilling where I didn't see exactly where the, the drill was going. This is a six times magnifying magnifying glass so I will be using that to um, double check all my scribed marks. It turns out when you're machining gunmetal, you should probably be more at between 350 and 500 RPM, not the 1100 that I was before. So having changed that, everything's a lot more smooth.